But looking deeper into the Sagan victory, I do want to mention, I think positioning played a big role in that final. Being able to get to that point where he's in a position has always been Sagan's specialty. He's been able to like worm himself through lead-ups to his sprint and so forth. But in that final corner, like you mentioned, the Pasqualon move, Kristoff closes that. Being able to be in that Kristoff wheel, that's the perfect wheel to be in because Sagan is the kind of rider that has that acceleration over a rider like Kristoff. So in all honesty, put different sprinters there that are sprinters with more acceleration in the position of like Kristoff, I think that Sagan's going to have a harder time winning this scenario that plays out. But his acceleration of Sagan versus Kristoff is just magnitudes different on paper so when i saw them going into the final like that i was pretty certain that sagan was going to win from that point onwards at what point during this final were you like sagan has a chance of winning this uh when he was on fourth wheel about 1700 meters to go because it still requires a lot of fitness to be there and to maintain that position and yeah he i think I was like, he's at least going to top three, top four this. Because out of these corners, if you're in, the, like we showed with Kokav's position, it doesn't matter how fast your sprint is. If you're, if you're sixth, seventh wheel, you can't do too much. It's narrow. And I also think Kristoff both the climbs. And then I do think closing Pascal on cost him a little bit. Uh, maybe not enough to, to win, but you never know. Um, I think... Yeah, and it's a mistake, obviously, in hindsight, if he'd won the sprint easily. <laughs> it's not a mistake, but it looks, yeah, Sagan looks good. It's a typical Sagan win. He's won at Tour de Suisse like a million times. Having seen Sagan do this right now, does this change your mind on the Tour de France, for example? Do you think that Sagan has a bid for the green jersey now after winning the stage at the Tour de Suisse? Yes, for two reasons. Firstly, uh, this is an indication, like this is the level he showed at Swiss or Romandy last year, uh, for starters. Second of all, the Tour de France green jersey competition is heavily favoured towards Sagan as compared to last year. Last year, we had an inordinate amount of pure sprint stages and few mixed stages where there was large points on offer. This year in the green jersey competition, there's, if you look at the rule book, which was uh, sent out by ASO a week or so ago, there's like full full points for legit uphill finishes, the Lausanne finish, the Longwy finish, uh, the Saint-Étienne, Carcassonne, all 50 pointers. That's more than the sprint stages we might have. There might only be one sprint stage in Denmark and the other, I mean, big bunch sprint. The other could be destroyed by crosswinds. Aremberg is 50 points. That might not be a bunch sprint. Calais, who knows in those messy northern French stages. So like for the Ewans, Jakobsen's, that's difficult. And it's against the master of intermediate strengths. And if he's climbing well, that's almost to me more important because the difference between fourth, uh, I don't think he's going to T3 bunch, the pure bunch sprints consistently. But from T4 to T8 is actually not that much difference. And so if he's just, he can come eighth. I think Sagan Benji can average eighth or seventh in the bunch sprints in this form. And then if he's getting embraced consistently, that's a real green jersey threat. I think so as well. And it's weird because like having fought through the green jersey points in previous days, you, you would think, okay, Sagan was not on my mind yet. And now this one through the Swiss stage is impacting that a lot because I'm instantly thinking, okay, how dangerous is this man to the likes of a Philipson, for example, who will go for it for Alperson, the likes of a Wout Fanat, who will go for it for Jumbo. Like... Does he play a role in that battle? And I think those teams will probably think to themselves, well, okay, perhaps we need to consider Sagan as well now as a competitor again after being out for so long when it comes to his injuries and so forth, you know? Maybe. What did he do? Unbound gravel and going to Utah is now the best ever preparation <laughs> for <laughs> European racing. I heard someone said it yeah, in my Discord. I'm not sure if it's true or not. I think it is. Apparently at Unbound or whatever, at the event, Sagan like, just went off from the gun for like 30 minutes full gas, split the group, and then stopped at a rest station for like half an hour afterwards, <laughs> which is like full troll mode. The Joker. Is his nickname. But sorry, back to Green Jersey. Yes. Like his name hasn't left my lips for a long time because he's had injuries, COVID like three times, and whatever other issues, but got good equipment. Total energy seemed quite competent, or at least trending in the right direction. This will, of course, and the at other advantages, Benji. Wow, Van Art, Yumbo have got split priori priorities. Sagan, Green, 
that's why they signed him. Like he has, I don't know if he's going Turgis, Os, Bodner. Anytime he says, let's light this up, this this rolling climb to go for the intermediate sprint, he has five guys to do it. That's also an advantage. Wow, you are forgetting the myth, the man, the legend, Pierre Latour, my man. Come on, who has to set up his attacks on the second last climb? I mean, Jumbo Visma. He'll try, they'll be pacing, you know, or UAE, Pagatch will be attack or pacing his, t- his teammates at six watts per kilo and 10 minutes in, Latour will attack. And they'll be like, what are you doing, Pierre? Um, <laughs> we'll wait for that to happen. But yeah, Sagan, green jersey. I mean, this also, I mean, our, our clip of uh, Froome, is Froome back? That one didn't, hey, that one, the lifespan of that, it wasn't very long. So we've seen one tour to Swiss stage and now we're saying he's back for the green jersey. Maybe it's more hope because if you're a, I mean, you might not like Sagan's sort of, I think a little bit dirty in sprints, et cetera, that's fine. But you have to accept that the commercial reality, particularly for people like us in the media side of things, is he's good for business. He's well known, particularly in English speaking countries. And I think it's good for the Tour de France. It's good for total energy. And it's like, Benji, when we see these guys go to different teams like Froome, I don't take any joy in Froome being bad. Like when I'm like, he's on an overpaid contract. Like I want Sagan to do well. Mention our show partners with, if you're getting into the winter, I believe I've heard it's freezing conditions down in Australia right now. Then Zwift is your perfect online cycling platform to keep on top of your fitness goals. You can go to Zwift.com through the link down below for a free seven-day trial. There's meetups, workouts, pace partners etc to keep you entertained and enthused and we can highly recommend swift for your indoor cycling experience 